Surviving your first month is very difficult in projects on board. You go through losing power, water, and your family and friends. In this video, I'm going to guide you through the best ways to survive your first months in projects on board. Unless you plan on living off canned goods and gas station snacks forever, you will need a farm, forage, fish, or trap your food. I'll go in depth about each one in this video, so you'll never worry about going hungry. These game mechanics may change in build 42, so if you're watching this after build 42 has come out, some of this info may be out of date. First off, farming. Farming is the easiest way to feed yourself at the start of your first month, when you have plenty of fuel at the local gas station. Gas stations do run out of fuel eventually, but it will take a long time. Basics of farming start with a trowel or a shovel and seeds. You can use any vessel that holds water for watering your plants. Rating one or two garden stores will supply you with enough buckets, watering cans, and seeds to last you forever. Side note, never take the farmer occupation or gardener trait. The only benefit it gives you, you can get with a magazine, and leveling farming is easy, so you don't need to worry about the early levels. The benefits of a farming level are purely more information on your plants. It doesn't affect speed or yield. Pause this here to read what level gives you what benefit. When harvesting your crops, make sure to leave at least half to seed. You'll only receive seeds when crops are left to seed. Lastly, five tips for farming. Number one, leave as many containers that catch water outside near your crops. Try and build your rain catches near your crops also. Number two, you can farm on your roof or anywhere. With a sack and shovel, you can collect dirt and then put it wherever you'd like. Number three, putting spacing between your crops will help stop disease spread. Number four, rotten milk can be used for the mildew cure. It doesn't have to be fresh. Number five, this building just up from Riverside is loaded with sacks of fresh produce. Once you're in a few weeks, take a trip there to load up on rotten produce for your compost boxes. Fertilizer takes 20 hours off the grow time, which is nearly half for carrots. It also has the chance to grow worms, which can be used to trap birds. Next up, foraging. Foraging could be a whole video on its own. There's a lot of minute details, but I will only cover some of the really important stuff that the game might not teach you. First up, search bonuses and debuffs. There's a lot of different things that can affect your ability to find items in search mode, such as the weather. Never forage in rain, snow, or fog, as the debuffs are up to 75%. Also, never forage at night. The debuffs are higher again at up to 95%. Forage when your character is at its healthiest. Negative moodles will affect your searching up to 95%. Your traits and occupation will also affect your foraging. The big occupations that affect foraging are veteran, burglar, chef, farmer, and park ranger. When searching, always be sneaking or in aim mode. They will increase your search multiplier by up to 33%. And even if you don't want the item, still dismiss it by right clicking so you can get the XP. Secondly, the items you will find. You are most likely looking for food, and you can find a lot of different food foraging, including mushrooms, berries, and small animals. Never eat the berries or mushrooms you find unless you have read the Herbalist magazine, or started with the Herbalist trait. They can be poisonous and kill you very, very quickly. You can also find rats, frogs, squirrels, or rabbits. Make sure to butcher them and then cook them into dishes like soup, or stews to make them go further. The wiki page for foraging has a lot of small details that I didn't cover. Definitely worth a read through. Here's another five random tips for foraging. Number one, having an umbrella equipped will reduce the rain penalty by 90%. Number two, if you need to find stones, check around cracked parts of roads. Number three, Having the short-sided perk will decrease your search radius by two, but can be negated by wearing glasses or reading glasses. Number four, you'll have a 50% bonus of finding mushrooms after it rains. Number five, most berries, mushrooms, vegetables, medicinal herbs, wild herbs, wild plants, eggs, insects, and animals can't be found in winter. The next two, fishing and trapping, have supplies needed that you can gather using farming and foraging. Worms are gathered from- Sorry, can't hear ya on fishing. Fishing provides a godly amount of food, and if you're collecting the worms from composting and collecting the insects you find during foraging, you will always have bait. You can get bait with fishing nets too, 
which are very cheap to craft using twine and wire. To start your fishing adventure, put your phone on silent so the wife's Susan ringing can't scare the fish away, and put your bait, rod, or spear into your main inventory, not your bag. It is also advised you don't use the fishing lures until you're at least a few levels into fishing, as you may break or lose them. Increasing the fishing level increases the quality of fish, chance to catch something, and reduces the chance to break the line, lose bait, and lose baited fish. The higher the quality of fish means more calories for the fillets you get out of it. In the vanilla game, there are several different types of fish to catch. The bass, the catfish, the crappy, the perch, the pike, the sunfish, and the trout. Make sure to butcher your fish into fillets. You can also make sushi out of them. Finally, we are going to cover trapping. Trapping can be a great passive way to gather meat for your meals. It's something you check once a day as they only work when they are 75 or more tiles away from your character. But you need to make sure you are checking your traps once a day if they are baited, as zombies are attracted to traps with animals in them, and they can also destroy your traps. When you should check your traps also depends on what animal you're trying to trap. If it's for a rabbit or squirrel, they are caught between 7pm and 5am. Get familiar with baits of your traps. There are plenty of non-perishables that you could just eat that can be used to trap certain animals to make your food go much further, such as cereal, peanuts, and peanut butter. You can't just place the various traps wherever you want and expect to catch everything. Here is a list of zones that you should be placing your traps in. Depending on what animals you are looking to trap, there is no limit on how many traps you place in an area. So once you find the right spot, go nuts with the traps. To finish up the video, I'm going to give you 10 items you should always hoard for long-term survival. Number one, any item that can hold water. Fill everything you aren't actively using with water to start building a fresh water stockpile in case you aren't prepared with water catches when the water eventually turns off. Number two, twine. Twine is often very overlooked. But once you start trying to build things such as log walls or traps for trapping, you'll very quickly realize you need quite a lot of the stuff. So grab it when you can. Number three, garbage bags. It seems silly that you should hoard garbage bags, but when you're running downtown, always grab them. You can never have enough water catches in your base, and when you are dying of dehydration, you're going to wish you grabbed them. Number four, digital watches, ported discs, cordless phones, earbuds, headphones, TV remotes, video games, radios, walkie-talkies. You'll find hundreds of these over the course of your first couple months in game. Hoard them all until you have the appropriate electrical skill book and disassemble them all. You will need the electrical scrap to repair your generators. Number five, military boots. Always have a couple of spare pairs at your base. They can be pretty rare depending on your location. When you stomp on zombies, it does damage your shoes, so always have a spare pair or two. Number six, cars. When you have secured your base, start driving around, hook them up to the back of your car, and drag them back to your base. Practice your mechanics on the cars you don't want, and try and keep all the good condition parts for your daily driver. Once you have built up a stockpile of scrap cars, use them to block off roads, and maybe place them around the walls of your base. Number seven, nails. Hoard boxes of nails whenever you find them. I've been stuck countless times trying to build a base and I've run out of nails. You can never have too many nails. Number eight, tools. Hoard three or four of each tool. So you'll never be stuck without something if you break one. Propane torches are the exception. You should always grab those no matter how many you have because they store propane in them, which can be hard to find sometimes. Number nine, propane tanks. If you ever see this barbecue, Grab the propane tanks out of them so you'll never be stuck with that propane. And finally, number 10. Soup pots, bowls, frying pans, roasting pans, and saucepans. You need these to start dishes such as stir fries, soups, stews, and many others. Fill them with ingredients, cook, and freeze them to keep them from going stale. Consider chucking that subscribe button to push for me, and share this video with your friend that sucks at Project Zomboid. Until next time everyone, keep slaying.